So welcome back, beautiful ones. This is an illumination chat and it has been a hot minute. I think the last time I did an illumination series was last year. It's an opportunity for me to dive back in because I had a topic that I wanted to go a little deeper on and I wanted to rekindle the series, which is either just me chatting with you about important topics for your luminous evolution for both your beingness and your business, but also sometimes bringing on beautiful guests who can share their conversation and their magic. For the next uh, probably three weeks, you'll be seeing just me, unless somebody hops into my field. I'm feeling like maybe there's a sparkling soul that I'm supposed to bring on to have the final conversation with you about resonance. But this topic is wild. Let me know if you can hear me. And actually, I realized I my mic is probably too far away because I switched from my webcam mic to this one here. And I would just love to know if you can hear me. Let me know by typing it into the live. Uh, just because I've had some weird microphone things over the last little while. So just wanting to make sure you can see me. You can hear me. Hello. Okay, perfect. Welcome. Take a breath. Land with me here. Anytime I have a little bit of tech stuff and I'm like, oh, is it working? It takes me out of the flow. So all I need to drop in to a deep magical conversation is the breath. Breathing it in and just letting the rest of it go. The energy is intense. There is the light rain pouring in. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the May Energy Interpretation. It's going to tell you all about the amplified light quotient of what is here for our luminous evolution. It's showing us, illuminating everything that is ready to be seen, be witnessed, sometimes be dissolved and transmuted and alchemized, and what's ready to be activated. So thank you, everyone that was like, I can hear you. Hooray. And yes, the mic closer, definitely better. This is one of those microphones that like the closer, the better, um, which is not what I'm used to. But I have been playing for a while with my voice as a healing tool, as an activation vehicle, and as one of my principal tools in manifestation in becoming magnetic to kinds of things, money, opportunities, soulmate clients. In fact, I've been using my voice in some way or another to create the dream life that I'm living and to dream into the life that I'm going to be living for the last several decades. And resonance is a big part of it. So I would love to ask you, when I say the word resonance, what does that mean to you? So just type it into the chat. I'd love to get your definition because we spend so much time as I'm speaking to, you know, the mystical, magical ones who know they're here to be helpers and healers, the beings who are on an evolutionary journey of returning to the truth of who we are. We will just throw that word out. I resonate with that. Ooh, I don't really resonate with him and what he talks about. It's not my thing. So I'd love to hear what you think and feel resonance is. And I'm actually going to let you know that in the dictionary, there are like six or seven different explanations because it's a it's a vibes and feeling thing. It's an acoustic kind of thing. And it's a quantum physics kind of thing. And the lines get a little bit blurry when we're talking about conscious creation. There is the sound quality piece that we're going to talk about. There is the um, quantum physics piece about the manifestation stuff that we are going to talk about. There's also the very deep feeling pieces that we are going to speak of. 
And this is going to be, as I said, probably a three-part series because there are so many topics within this. You've probably heard of the law of resonance. We'll be talking about that next time, the manifestation magic that is available. There's also the pieces around energy healing, clearing, and energetic discernment that I really want to talk about today. It's all of you feelers and knowers and mystics and healers, like you already have access to this. I know you already feel things, but that can sometimes throw us into overwhelm. I want to help you fine tune this concept consciously so that you can utilize it on purpose and really use it to its maximum potential which then amplifies your manifestation, magnetism, and magic so you can create what it is that you desire to create. But first we have to have the clear vessel for creation. So mm, just tuning in here. So Diana's saying that resonance means this speaks to me in my language and it's relatable. Okay. Celeste is saying it's what everything is made of, energy, and the frequency rises and falls. Interesting. Nicole's saying matching vibrational frequency is what I'd say resonance is. Ah, you are all tuning in to different facets of resonance, right? It is in for the audiophiles, the sound quality and clarity. And a resonance includes like a, a tone that has this like wholeness to it. It actually reverberates in this, um, I don't I want to say deeper, I didn't pull up my definitions again, but it reverberates in a way that can be felt. There is also the piece about matching frequencies when I was looking this up, and it was basically when a vibration is going to align with another object's vibration and this was interesting, the, the physics part of it said, and amplify that. And I was like, ooh, that makes sense. Because the work that I do as like a voice activator, where sometimes the tones of my voice will literally spark these remembrances for people, and they will be activated into a remembrance of their soul truth and who they really are and all of these things, or it will just spark this knowing of deep truth inside of them. When my voice is resonating with you, inside of you, it might excite or amplify your current vibration. So that might happen today. That might happen as we're speaking. You might have experiences, not only just in your body of feeling, not only the like sound of my voice, landing inside you, traveling across the airwaves, but it also might go so deep inside of you that it activates pieces of you, inside of you, ancient wisdom encoded in your DNA, and you'll go, oh, I remember that. <laughs> so taking another deep breath in, this is the power of resonance that we do have to both clear out energy create alignment, have discernment energetically, and then from there direct our own energy to create and manifest with discernment what is actually for us, which is such an important superpower so that you can create an alignment with your cosmic trajectory, with what your soul's destiny is and what's actually for you. Because what really grinds my gears is watching people try to manifest and create without taking that step of clearing out all of the old stories and pieces that aren't actually yours. And then they're trying to create something that's not actually fully aligned with them. And they're like, oh, my manifestations aren't working. Why isn't it working? Like, because you're trying to create or manifest something that's not actually for you. And it's somebody else's desire or destiny. And it could come from the collective, 
could come from a parent, could come from your lineage even, right? When we're able to use the discernment factor around the resonance, and, and we're talking like soul resonance, body resonance with, with this energetic capacity to understand what is really for us in this clear and undistorted way, which we're going to be talking about the most today to set the stage for the manifestation magic that we can do, we can actually identify what is for us, what is our most aligned, like highest timeline kind of creations and manifestations, and then work to create from that place and not what we think is going to be safest or easiest or what maybe our parents or grandparents or teachers programmed us to believe was actually our dream. So all of this energetic discernment for creation and manifestation, magic and magnetism that we're going to be getting to in part two requires this clean and clear vessel. Your body as an energetically sensitive human who is intuitive, maybe a little bit mystical, I know, and magical. I know that's you. I know who's in this group here. I know who's watching this right now. You're an energetically sensitive person, whether or not you've already come to the point of knowing how to uh, use that to your advantage, or if it's still overwhelming for you, doesn't matter. This conversation is still for you. If you are someone who finds your energetic sensitivity to be kind of overwhelming, I believe what we're going to talk about in terms of resonance is going to be helpful because the story of the wounded empath is something that I think we're ready to dissolve and bringing you into the empowered intuitive archetype instead not the one who's so energetically sensitive that they can't navigate this life because it's too overwhelming because other people's feelings are all over them and it's just hard to go into a crowded place or a party with all the people and it's just too much. Ah. That doesn't have to be your experience. Our strengths are actually often, at first, weaknesses that are just the strengths turned up too high. So your sensitivity to resonance, to energy is a superpower, but it needs to be harnessed. It needs to be aligned and refined and have the right set and setting, which is basically going to be your body, your mindset, your intentions, and your energetic experience so that it doesn't take you out rather gets to be this thing that takes you to where you want to go, your most aligned divine cosmic trajectory with all of your manifestations and creations just being in flow with who you are, who you're supposed to be. So let me know if you're watching or if you're on the replay. I, I love hearing either way because by the way, we're working in zero point and it's like we're, we're speaking even if you are watching in my future, we're here together. We're here right now. I can feel your energy because I have learned how to handle my energetic sensitivity and fine tune it and work in zero point in a clear space. Meaning that I can actually like attune to different energies from all over the place, different times, different spaces. I can feel it in the now. So that is one of the superpowers that comes through when you can really like fine tune this energetic sensitivity to resonance. That's why I want to bring you this information to hone your psychic and intuitive abilities, as well as your creation and manifestation abilities, because both of them need to weave together for you to be creating on purpose and with your soul design and what you're here to share. And something that I should just let you know is that like my my raison d'être, my my reason for being here is to help the healers, the teachers, the coaches, the healers, the leaders, the luminaries or luminaries in training, really refine and align their frequency to get the confidence clarity and creativity that they need to create freaking the world we want to live in 
the world we know will exist through our combined and joint efforts, right? Co-creating heaven on earth sounds like something that is this way far off dream. And I believe that when we do this work, the work that I do inside of my programs with my one-on-one -on -one clients that I share in these talks, in my free masterclasses, all of this work that I know other people are also doing all over the world, we are fine-tuning our creation capacity so that we can actually tune into the magic that our entire like multidimensional self has. That's the coolest piece too. I want you to create this clarity inside of your being so that you can actually pull through the multidimensional information from everything you have been and everything you will be so you can have all the wisdom of infinity inside of you so that you can do the things that you are here to do. Like, imagine if we all tuned into that. How quickly could the world change? This is where we're headed. This is where we are right now. We're expanding into that. We're learning how to do that. We are growing into this capacity and it's turning on more and more and more. Let me know if you're watching, if you're someone who can already pull through information from uh, more than just your human self. Maybe you talk to your highest self. Maybe you're able to connect with source or different angelic realms or guides or aspects of your multidimensional self or maybe past selves. And if you have started to do that, you are already a step ahead, right? We are going to be talking more about that in part two and how that helps us really create this stuff. This is a superpower that humans either have or are growing into to be tapped in and tuned in to all of the wisdom that we have acquired throughout this infinite game. Because you and I both know this is not the only life we have lived, right? You have wisdom beyond your years. And whether you believe that's you just tuning into the collective or like, you know, the collective consciousness or your soul that is infinite and eternal, you know things. You have visions or memories or soul remembrances of how it's been in the past and what's possible. You can feel things. You feel things when they're off and you feel things when they're in flow, right? You feel maybe other people's things. Your feeling sense is also one of your intuitive senses, right? They call it clairsentience. And it's one of the most important tools to really speak of. And that's where resonance is our training ground for magic. I know so many people that are in this world that want to activate their clairvoyance and their clairaudience and their claircognizance and all of that, which is, you know, your, your seeing, your hearing, and your knowing, your direct knowing. And those senses, you know, are just expansions of, of your normal, you know, seeing, hearing, thinking kind of senses and knowing senses. But they're all very much up here, right? When people do that, and they're not deeply also at the same time in their body and playing with resonance and their clairsentience and their capacity to know through feeling inside of their body, they typically are at risk for creating or not noticing distortions in the field, in the information that's coming through, and they're not able to ground it in to this reality and make it practical. And that's actually when we're at the most risk for, um, I'm going to be real with you, like psychotic breaks <laughs> and things like that. Because the difference between like a schizophrenic and a mystic or psychic, you know, intuitive person is, is truly like alignment and embodiment and having open heart centers and like root centers and all of these lower, lower 
things running at the same time. And let's be real. It's typically because the body is thought of as less than or, or has been for a long time in the spiritual communities. And people are always trying to like, for, for a while, there was a big theme of like trying to go up and out and send and go all of the way, you know, without and leave the body behind, right? The body was an afterthought or it was hated because it felt so dense and it was restricting the consciousness and all of these things and these like these are truly distortions judgments that the body is less than or that it's trapping your soul energy and your consciousness into a limited form and all of these things some of it is from distortions that came down um some of it is from trauma and a lot of it is just because we weren't ready for it, right? So these pieces of embodiment are so important for enough stability and clarity to be able to create what is actually for you. When we are not in our bodies, we don't really feel resonance. Because it's something that's felt in the physical form. You don't, people don't say I as often like, I think I resonate with that. We're like, I resonate with that, right? Like it's a knowing and a feeling, not a thinking kind of experience. It's a feeling in the body. And the body is actually a resonance chamber. Your faces. If you think about a skull, not to be morbid or anything like that, we've all seen a skull from a skeleton, um, our nasal cavity and the like um, nasal laryngeal passageways and things like that, big empty spaces in our skull. And this is how we both create sound <laughs> and also part of how we receive it. But when we're creating it, we are, you know, moving air across our vocal cords, which vibrate and create vibration uh, that is amplified through the resonance chamber of our literal face and then gets sent out into the world. We're not going to get super technical about like how all of that works, but you've probably felt it before, right? If you hear someone speak, you can hear differences in the resonance and where that is resonating down low. Or if someone is talking really up high, it's coming more through the nasal passages and you can hear it resonating more in there coming out of here. Another good, bad, right, wrong. But the space and place where the air is really playing is going to change the way it's resonating. When we're receiving and feeling resonance, we feel it everywhere. We feel resonance or we're capable of feeling the resonance of someone's words, of someone's energy, or of music, let's just say, some deep bass, or some beautiful melodic strings or something like that. We can feel it throughout our entire body. Think for a moment, and my festival background and being a raver is showing, but like, if you haven't ever had the experience of hearing really heavy bass music with big speakers, <laughs> maybe you, you haven't experienced this, but like it moves through your entire body. Let me know if you've never had that before. I think most of the people in here have at least cranked their music up loud enough that you know resonance can actually ripple through your whole form. And if this is not making sense to you, like why would that happen? Let's just think about how uh, ripples go through water. We are mostly water. <laughs> so even if something resonant, a tone, an idea, even let's just say, goes through your ears, although you're, you're catching it with all of you, because of that resonance factor oh I like how my camera went out of focus when I did that it's gonna go through your entire form 
So we feel things in this beautiful, deep, physical way, even if they're auditory. So we can't take the whole body out of the equation. And I'm so sorry, she's like, probably have some hearing loss from hugging some speakers at a festival. Yeah, me too. I did try to wear earplugs, but wasn't always super successful at that. So we have proved this concept that our bodies experience vibrations. And I want to just highlight that sometimes these vibrations are physical. They're like sound waves are still a physical thing, right? We can see them. We can hear them, right? They're, they're actually sound waves when they hit our ear they actually make a little the little bones inside of our ears vibrate and that's what our brain is translating into words or different sound things it's actually kind of wild how it all works but your ear interprets the vibrations that travel through the air just like a radio can interpret the vibrations that travel through the air in a different way. And I believe that our bodies are able to, if we are clear vessels and we learn how, they can interpret not only the physical, like sound waves and things like that, waves of energy. And we can come to have deep understanding of what sound vibrations and energetic waves that transmit information actually mean partially through this body form. And it's actually, I believe, essential for us moving forward to be able to feel energy, to be able to work with energy in this uh, very embodied way that's physical and tangible and visceral. And it's not comfortable for everyone at first for a couple different reasons. So I want to talk about why some of us can't feel energy the same way. And I might be talking to you, or you might be able to think of someone in your life, someone who doesn't maybe get the woo-woo stuff and they're like, Reiki, energy, what is that? And they don't know that they are still feeling it in their body. It's probably trauma. Let, like it's a nervous system thing. So if you've heard me speak before, you've probably heard me share this, but I think it's important to get on the same page. There is a central nervous system in our body. And if we are relaxed, our sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system are actually two different strands of it. And I actually, I'm, feel, I'm just getting the vibe. Don't go super technical. I don't want to confuse anything. Let's go very, very simple here so you can feel it and your brain isn't trying to remember terms. So I'm actually going to wipe that out. You can go and research it um, about all of the technical pieces. You are either in rest and digest, right? Where you're chill, you're feeling good, or you don't feel safe and you are in fight or flight. And when you are in that activated fight or flight phase, you put energetic shields up. When your energetic shields are up, information doesn't always get through the shields. And if it does get through the shields, it is coming through and it might be distorted, meaning maybe not all the information is coming through pro properly or it might even be coming through in a way that is quite true, but your lensing, your perspective is suspicious. And you're like, I don't know if I can believe that. This feels like an attack. I don't know what to trust. You're like, is this my ego? Is this my intuition? I just don't know. It's not a moral failing if you're in a position and you can't identify whether it's your ego or your intuition or spirit or source talking. It's the way the human body is designed. When we don't feel safe, we are just trying to survive. So deeply feeling things, it's not really important. What's important is that your entire body is actually diverting all of its resources to save your life. 
So you shut down like very physical things, your digestion, your immune system. Uh, and unfortunately, like if blood is being diverted from your brain, the thinking place to like your limbs. So you can run away from the danger or you can fight the danger. So we're not our smartest. We're not our most analytical or intuitive or intelligent or creative or rational or reasonable when we are in this state of, of feeling unsafe, which is called dysregulation, right? When we are dysregulated, when we have our energetic shields up and we don't feel safe because nothing feels safe around us, distortion happens. So what you do feel in your body because of these shields and because of all of these extra pieces that are happening, you get energy and it like is going to like bump around inside of you. There's no clear channel for it to flow through and it, it gets distorted. Like uh, there's echoes bouncing off of the walls and there's other programs running and you're like, what is this sound? And it's just, we can't sort it out. So deep breath in. So that's just saying relatable. <laughs> I'm too sad. I'm not sure if you're talking about the chaos or just being singing bowls, which I love that Rachel said here. We are singing bowls. Yeah, the sound reverberates all around us. The energy reverberates all around us. In order to really be able to unpack and understand energy, which is absolutely essential to do what I know we want to do, right? We need to have this clear channel through us. And in order for that to happen, we need to have this relaxation. We need to be open enough to have energy actually flow through us, not get trapped inside of us and bounce all around, because then we can't actually easily pull out the codes from it. And when I say codes, I mean information, because energy carries information. And electromagnetic energy is what's constantly, I think, being like emitted from, not I think, it's constantly being emitted from humans, our hearts and from our brains, probably from our guts too. And that electromagnetic information can also come from other places. The feeling part is the magnetic part and the electric part is the, the thought part. And so in order to fully decode this energy and information from other people and from other sources like source, we need to not just think about it. We need to also feel it in our body. And if we can't feel it, then we're missing one half of being able to decode and work with and understand the entire world around us and the other people in it. So resonance is powerful, but it can work against us, right? If we are really full of stagnant energy that's like clogging us up, whether that's like traumas and dramas and things that have happened inside of us that I'm so sorry, so sorry you've had these experiences that have wounded you. Um, but if they're still stuck in us to the degree that we are not able to actually come into that space of rest and relaxation and digestion, that openness, it means we can't properly interpret information from our intuition. And everything that comes through, we're going to be second guessing. We're not going to know if it's distorted or not. We might be suspicious, right? We're not going to be able to fully be able to work with it for our highest and best creation magic. Okay. Which again, part two, I'm going to next week go live sometime. And we're going to talk about, or maybe it won't even be next week. I'm like, how soon does this conversation need to happen? We're going to talk about how to create, but first we need to know how to be a clear enough channel to be the singing bowl that actually can resonate. But let me tell you, if I were to put a whole bunch of like, I don't know, wooden blocks and stuff like that inside my singing bowl and I tried to, I don't have my singing bowl here, but let's pretend this is the singing bowl. This is my my daughter and I, I have my little mallet and I go bing you know it's gonna sound more like the mug and not the singing bowl because first off it's full of some decaf coffee and coconut milk but it was like this flat like clink instead of having the 
bong, wom, 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 wom kind of energy that actually resonates and creates this movement and this flow of energy because the things inside of it keep it from vibrating to its full potential. And we are very much, like Rachel said, singing bowls. So if we are too full of stuff, we cannot fully resonate with not only who we are, but also the other energies coming in and through. And we won't know what to do about it. We're not going to be able to have that clarity, especially, here's the thing, you can be full of your own traumas and dramas and things and stories and stuff and all of that and feelings that you haven't felt. You can be full of everyone else's too. So for those people that are very energetically sensitive and feel like empaths who can't walk through a mall without picking up other people's stuff. This is part of that strength being turned up too high where you are fully, you're receiving, but the energy channel within you is not flowing well enough for it to flow through you. So it's getting stuck in you. So in order to fully be able to harness this power of resonance to manifest and be magical, and, and we'll talk about all of that next time, we need to have this clarity. We need to be singing bowls that aren't full of junk. <laughs> and here's the annoying part. It's not a one and done. It's more like doing the dishes. We do have to be doing constant energy clearing. And if you've ever come into one of my programs, you know that the foundation to be, you know, creating, whether we're creating your capacity to do light language or uh, manifest and create or become a coach and facilitator, because I work on all these different levels, right? The personal resonance pieces, and then also the, like, the create a business to share these magical principles of resonance pieces. We need to clear our vessel. We need to do this more than ever now. The need for clarity and purity inside of ourselves is amplified because there is so much light pouring in. There's so much information coming at us. If we don't have a clear channel, then it just bounces around and it not only starts to feel awful and we can't trust it, I, I want to give you a bit of a word of caution with how much things are accelerating if we don't have this capacity for energy to flow through us it will short circuit us and i want to make a prediction that we're going to be seeing even more people having this short circuiting unfortunately over the next while so the short circuiting is when energy comes in and it can't get out and it's just bouncing and bouncing and bouncing around us. And it literally makes us go crazy. If we are not able to have that entry point and the exit point. So if we are full of stuff, thoughts, old beliefs, traumas, and the crappy part is most people are very traumatized right now. So this energy work is really essential to create the clear channel. And I'm, I'm going like this when I'm saying clear channel, but it's, should be always in all ways, right? Front and back from side to side, because energy wants to be able to flow through you no matter where it's coming in. But I think the most important one that I want you to focus on to be able to have this energetic discernment that I also want to speak about is the top down one. And you've probably seen or thought of this before, right? That point through uh, which you go from the root all the way up to the crown, where our major energy centers live that connects us to the cosmos and connects us to the earth. Creating an energy flow through that place is absolutely essential for you to be able to really be able to have discernment about energy, about to be able to feel something and just know. And to be able to unpack the information, which is part of like the evolution of your psychic and intuitive senses, which everybody already has. We are all incredibly intuitive, but what happens is we learn not to trust it because we don't feel safe, right? We get into that distortion field because we are traumatized and our, our higher 
expressions of our senses kind of turned off, right? You might be able to feel and taste and know, you know, from the very tangible physical things, but our lenses into energy and that other like frequency bandwidths where you're getting those psychic intuitive readings and hits and things like that and information from your intuition and from source, those are turned off when we don't feel safe, when all of that adrenaline is pumping. So we get to work on this in two ways so that we can really harness the power of resonance to be magnetic and magical and manifest in alignment with our heart and soul desires and our beautiful destinies. We need to work on this in like healing all the old stuff, right? Working through those things that may have happened in childhood, the big events that have been kind of stuck in us. And you don't have to do this alone. There are plethora of amazing healers and space holders, many of whom are in this group, right? Who can help you and hold space for that healing work? There are resources all over. If you just Google, you know, like, trauma, healing, all of these different things, you can beautifully start to unwind this. And it does take time. Then we also have to do the daily practices and the daily work so that we don't stay stuck full of other people's things. And a friend and mentor of mine recently just said that he believes that in the future, we will probably require... <laughs> And he's like, maybe this won't happen because our technology will advance. Probably require meditation for like five, six hours a day just to handle the acceleration of the information and the light that's flowing through. Like, like maybe we won't. Maybe we will level up to the point where we won't. But right now, if we don't have time to do energetic hygiene practices and clear out all the old junk that's stuck in us and we're not making space every freaking day, what happens is we go into overwhelm. And when we go into overwhelm, we are dysregulated. We throw up energetic shields and then all of the energy that's in us plus all the new stuff that's trying to come through starts to bounce around and we are no longer the clear vessels. We're no longer you know, able to flow with that energy and start to pull out information without that distortion. We are a mess. Let me know if you've ever been that mess, right? Where you're like, ah, oh, it's too much and I don't know. And we can't access our higher level reasoning, right? We can't, and we certainly can't access, you know, our intuitive discernment and intuition and things. We're just like, I can't find my glasses and they're on the top of our head. We all get into that state. There is just too much happening on earth to not occasionally get into overwhelm. But I want to say that if you want to be magnetic, magical, a uh, manifesting wizard, and I'm going to teach you how to do that next time, you need to have clarity so that resonance can actually be felt without that distortion in you. I have so many, so many different places and spaces from my, my paid courses to other like free masterclasses that are inside the Luminous Evolution group. I give energetic practices, but you also know lots of them, right? Moving energy, Using your tools, being creative, meditating, breath work, tapping, belief repatterning, they go on and on and on. And you are welcome to list a few in the comments, share your favorites, like how do you like to move energy and what makes you feel the clearest? I know I have other dancers in here. For me, spending couple hours, not just like one song, but a couple hours dancing intentionally. Yes, that is when I feel like I clear up the most because I'm breathing hard. I've been working with the resonance of music. I've been letting the musical magic and the medicine move through me, but I've been moving my body and clearing up pockets of density. And there've been thought forms that have come up and I've looked at them. And if I like them, I'll keep them. And if I don't like them, I'll let them go. And I do so much of my energy clearing and magic and all of that when I move in in dance and I am playing with resonance on all of those different levels and layers. Also, sometimes it's it's other kinds of sound medicine, right? Light language from my own self actually is one of my other favorite practices. So speaking my soul's essence, my soul's tones, and then hearing it back 
like recording it and listening it to it back. That's what gets me. Mm, Nicole's saying breath movement sound, the golden trifecta. And all of those work with resonance to clear things out. Oh my goodness. Rachel feels the most clarity when singing. Ah. Oh, and you know what? Can I add in that actually I love also singing and toning when I'm dancing. It's like, like extra sparkly magic. So that's my shortcut is to dance and sing and move and breathe all at the same time, bringing in the creativity, like all of those pieces and using like beautiful music. So that's what I like to do. Now, I don't talk about this often because I, I usually use these embodied practices and I teach them, right? If I'm at a retreat, uh, like I had uh, last weekend, we we used movement, we used sound, we used breath, we were doing activities. And I, I teach people how to do that inside my Creation Coach Academy, how to take people through the transformational activities that give them enough space to then be able to tap into their intuitions. But in my one-on-one -on -one sessions, what I love to do, and I do similar things when I'm meditating on my own, is but I love to actually create sacred space. And I'm already clear when I'm coming into these sessions, or I will clear myself instantly with just a few breaths and my intention, because I've done this work that I can, I can do it pretty fast, especially in the sacred space. And then I tune into my client's energetic field. And using all of my intuitive senses, including what feels almost like echolocation, I will feel and notice whatever is impeding the flow of energy. So as I'm speaking to them over Zoom, I mean, we're not even in the same place. So we're doing this across space and time. Time and space don't actually matter. I'm able to feel where the blockages are and the density is. And it might be something that we need to track into. And I might already know, I might be like, oh, this is an Akashic thing. This is from one of your past lives or a future life, perhaps. It might be something from a childhood experience. It might be actually not even theirs. It might be collective, right? But I can feel oftentimes whether it's never just one thing, but it could be a belief system. It could be something physical, an emotion that's trapped in the body. There's all these different pieces and places it could be. But then clear it out. And I get people to feel what it feels like to how the energy is literally flowing through them first. And the people that I work with are already quite intuitive, right? They, they are already healers. They're already luminaries in training, if not already out there shining their light. And I'll be like, like, where are you feeling the block? And they're often able to be like, you know, it's in the back of my neck. And it's like on the left hand side. And I think it's also related to this, 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 and this. Sometimes they don't have the story. But what I have learned to do with them is to use intention, imagination, and using spirit as well, and sound frequencies to move the, the blocks. Sometimes it needs to be dissolved. Sometimes it needs to be disappeared, like Thanos snapped away. There's all of these different ways we can play. But I will often even have my clients focus on that area and just make a tone and that I'll be like, make the tone and visualize whatever needs to happen for it to be disappeared out of that flow of energy, whatever is impeding it. Sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it takes different steps. Sometimes we have to ask people on the luminous team to come in and help and give activations. But just from those three things, intention, imagination and sound as well as like maybe a sprinkling of like breath and and that sacred energy of space we're not doing this alone people can move pockets of density that have been stuck inside them sometimes for like eternities that's been from like life after life after life and when they return that flow of energy to what it should be which is free flowing through you it's so fun <laughs> their intuition heightens their their clairsentience like that feeling in their body is deeper but also 
I, I have clients who through this process had all their other clairs, right? Their, their clear audience, their clairvoyance really start to heighten. So they just, they're like, Ooh, I know I trust myself now. And it's through this healing process that we then can come back into that divine flow and we start to reunify the parts of us that have been cut off because it is now a game, not just of healing, but this sounds funny, but holding, like reunifying body, mind, heart, and soul all together into one cohesive flow of energy. And here's the best part. When we do that, and we have this beautiful flow of things that can come in and things that can go, the overwhelm doesn't happen the same way, right? So when we're not overwhelmed, we don't get triggered into that fight or flight response and we don't turn off all of our higher lensings. We can come into this, like this very flow state where we know, where we're able to create with more ease, but also because we're intuitive, we go, what is actually for us? Because this is the next part. I'm going to talk about the how of like the creating, the manifestation, the law of resonance, the magic, all of that next time, as I said. But energetic discernment is only possible when we're in this state of flow, of relaxation. And there's many levels and layers and parts to energetic discernment. But one part is, for all my empaths out there, is this even mine? And if you are wildly overstimulated and overwhelmed, you can't even know. You're like, I, right? If we're so overwhelmed, we don't know. I don't know. Is it mine? Is it someone else's? We can't even tap into that part of our intuition. If we have our energy mostly flowing and we just feel something come in there and we're like, oh, I feel off. What is this? The question, is this even mine? will often get us an immediate like, yes, no, or partially, right? You might feel it, you might hear it, you might just know it. It doesn't matter how that answer comes in. But as soon as you are clear enough to get a distinction, an answer from that, yes or no, it's mine or it's not, your body will start the self-sorting process. And that self-sorting is, if it's mine, fit. if it's not mine, it's just going to go away. Sometimes it takes more. Sometimes it takes more energy work or healing. I'm not saying it's always that easy, but just asking the question begins the process. And when we get a little bit more spaciousness, our intuition has even more room to play. And we have more of that refinement and alignment and attunement to what is actually for us. So many of us don't know the difference between how ego feels and how intuition feels because they feel and sound different. Some people don't know, but I'm curious if you do. If you do, there is just so much that is available to us through that discernment process, right? Once we can sort out, is this actually for me as well, right? Not just, is this mine? when information is coming in is this actually for me because that is the trick as well with discernment once you become a clear channel ideas and inspiration and magic and intuition is going to flow through you all the time and you might get really excited about ideas and you might have this like oh yes the resonance in your body you're feeling lit up you're feeling amazing you're like yes 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 feel it i'm excited i'm jazzed about this idea And if you do not use your discernment to another level, rather than just being like, oh yeah, this resonates, it's, and you just stop there, you're not taking it deep enough. You need to ask, is this for me? Is this even for me? And is this for me now? And I just asked these questions inside of my Voice of Creation program yesterday. I thought they were too important to leave inside that space. Not everything is for you even if it resonates. Breathe that in. Bit of a mic drop. Not everything is for you, even if it resonates with you. So what do you do then? Ask. Go deeper. Tune into that resonance with even more discernment, like bringing it all together. 
not just like, I vibe with this, so I'm going to go with it. You can't at this point. You have to be discerning. There's too many possibilities. Once you reach this level of feeling the energy flow through you without distortion, you got to be, is this for me? Or is this some idea that just passed through me that I get to throw back to the collective that someone else gets to pick up because it's going to be for them? If you try to do everything, every inspiration that resonates with you, that comes through, you're going back into overwhelm and then you're not going to know what is for you or what is yours or anything like that again. So it's this, this mild caution I'm giving you, that this energetic discernment gets to be the piece that we are building on when I get into next time, how to use the law of resonance to become an energetic match for that which you want to create or attract, okay? Our vessel has to be clear. We need to have the discernment to be like mine or not mine. And then we get to play with creating from that space, right? If you're one of those beautiful empathic souls who are always the most beautiful, open-hearted, like here to help, here to heal, but taking on too many people shit, Working on this piece of letting things flow through you and really tuning into what's mine and not mine and consistently doing your energetic clearing practices on the daily and sometimes the hourly until you stabilize and heal all of those pockets of density that are in you, it's going to really, really, really help, right? To be able to be in your energy and your power. And what we are talking about next time will be really like amping up your energy. So you can not just be a receiver of the resonant information anymore, but you can start to emit it. You can start to be the one who becomes magnetic to soulmate clients, opportunities, soul friends, all of these things. So I will tell you, in that clean and clear state, magic and miracles. <laughs> so fun. And uh, just to give you a little, a little fun taste of like what can happen there. Some of you have heard this story before, but I have had people hear my soul voice. Not just me speaking in English, though that can help, but my soul voice where I just start to uh, share tones and, and syllables and sounds and movement that are fully from my soul without people needing to translate them. I've just shared that on the internet, on Facebook, online, and people will go, oh, there you are. There you are. Huh, I'm supposed to work with you. You're a coach, teacher, healer for me. What is it you do? I'm ready. Let's go. I have made tens of thousands of dollars at this point. Hundreds of thousands, I guess I could say, from literally sharing my soul resonance with people. So I think that's where we're going to end today. I've already been talking for a long time, and you probably have a good idea of whether or not we resonate. But I'd love for you to hear just a little bit more of all of this and of me without worrying about translating English. So from my soul directly to yours, I invite you just to receive not through your mental lensing, not through trying to understand, but through resonance entirely and just feeling the energy without judgment and just allowing. And it's always sent out with the intention of the highest good for all, harm to none, of course. So this is what my soul wants to share with you. Thank you. The <laughs> I was breathing and I want you to close your eyes if you can and just feel the resonance of those tones in your body. And 
I'd love to hear if you could feel the energy a little differently than when I was speaking English to you. Sometimes people have visions come through, activations, clearings, or nothing at all. Maybe you realize something with energetic discernment and you're like, ooh, I don't like the way her soul sounds, and you were turned right off. And that's fine. Both of these things are perfectly divine because sometimes dissonance teaches us even more than resonance. What is for me, what is not for me. And just an aside, dissonant tones sometimes, like things that don't sound harmonic and they're like kind of a little like, Ugh. sometimes those tones we actually need to break up density inside of us as well, something discordant, right? So, and, and this is beyond music. Sometimes an interaction with a discordant soul that you don't resonate is gonna trigger you. And that trigger is a freaking gift because it can break up or at least illuminate for you. And you can choose to break up pockets of density, judgment, things like that, that are in your way of having this clean and clear vessel. So you don't always have to run away from discordance and and dissonance, right? Sometimes it is the greatest teacher. And that's another piece of that energetic refinement and discernment that we need. Not just to go, oh, I don't resonate and then like run away. Sometimes it's a chance to lean in and learn something about ourselves and get clarity through contrast and all of these things. So just tuning in here. Yeah, some people could feel that that energy in terms of like shivers through the body, um, deep tingles through the head and the body, energy releasing. Oh, made you tear up. You're welcome, Sheila. It's uh it's a fun gift that I have been given, but I can speak now with authority that I know that the way that my voice lands when I'm doing light language or soul song or different tones with people feels so profound is because I am, for the most part, a very clear channel because I practice this stuff all of the time. I practice creating that clarity so I can send stuff with more, I want to say amplitude, right? It is more refined. Whereas if I was absolutely flogged with energy that didn't need to be inside me, that was that was interfering with my flow, it wouldn't land the same way. And so we are all in this process together of learning how to refine our energy, clear out the density, fine tune into the flow that we require to activate our deepest connection with our intuition and our soul and all of that. And then next week or next time, we're going to talk about embodying that energy that is what we want to create and then collapsing time to be able to actually bring more of that into the now. Again, all of this can only happen from that clear field and that clearing is a constant thing. So I want to remind you, it does take work. If you want to be able to be a magnetic, magical manifester who can create magic and who can speak and it's so refined and you're so aligned that it's like, and so it is. When you can speak and people go, oh my gosh, I want to work with you. I feel your energy. All of that takes the clear vessel first. So. I'm excited to return to the topic and expand it. I want to honor your time. I've already been talking for an hour and 10 minutes here. But uh, if you want to go deeper and you're like, how do I, do I begin? I can drop a few links below. I have a masterclass on how to open your channel so that you can speak your soul song and your light language through some fun activities that talks more about that energetic refinement and clarity with all elements being balanced for $11 called uh, Three Secrets to Unlocking Your Light Language so you can speak from the soul. I can link that down below. It's just at learnlightlanguage.com. But basically, this is the foundation and cornerstone or the beginning point of all of the different pieces that I like to share uh, because I think it's the foundation for all of the work but I really want you to hear me. 
the fun part is after you get some of that clarity, that that healing, that clearing, that is not the final destination, my friends. Then you access your creation magic and you get to play in alignment and create what it is that you desire in this life with so much more ease and fun and play. And here's the craziest part is that it's not always about creation in terms of something physical and tangible, though that's part of it. You can learn how to have the emotional experience, the energetic experience that you are desiring through the things you want to create immediately, like not having to do it. You want to feel abundant and free and you're waiting for money to flow in before you get the, the feeling because that's what you, you actually want, the security or the freedom or the abundance or the joy or whatever. I can teach you how to bring that into the now and you can actually access it before you have the physical tangible thing, which then becomes magnetic to the physical tangible thing and you can create it with so much more ease and fun and playfulness and joy. So we've just started this dive into resonance. If you have questions from today, please leave them in the comments. I would love to hear. I'd love to be able to support you by going deeper and answering those questions. This has been a lot of fun. So I might have missed a few of your replies, but I'll go back and I will read those. Ah, amazing. Thank you so much for joining me on this today. If you want to play with more of it, check out that learnlightlanguage.com just to get that, that channeling piece through. And uh, I'm going to see you soon. We're going to expand upon all of this into the realms of like abundance and possibility. It's going to be so much fun. So much love, dear ones.